Hello, in this video we're going to talk about equilibrium points and how to find them. Let's begin with a definition. An equilibrium point for a recurrence relation or dynamical system is a point and we'll denote that point x sub eq. Okay, so that will be our notation for equilibrium point. So an equilibrium point for a recurrence relation or dynamical system is a point x sub eq such that x sub eq equals capital F of x sub eq. In other words, what you put in is exactly what you get out. Equilibrium points are also called steady states or fixed points. All right, so the relation doesn't move the point, it fixes it. Now in general, we want to find equilibrium points because number one, they're important when we come to look at phase portraits in the analysis, and number two, it might be desirable to maintain a system at a certain state, like if we want a certain equilibrium state to be maintained, we might want to know if that uh, equilibrium state is stable and, and so forth. Anyways, let's go and do some examples. The first example, I want to look at a discrete time model. This is a logistic growth model and the carrying capacity is already set at 150. Now I want to show that x of eq is 150 is a fixed point. So what I want to show is that when x sub t minus 1 equals 150, this produces an output of x sub t equals 150. In other words, what you put in is exactly what you get out. In other words, x sub t equals this logistic growth model with the x sub t minus 1 fed into it. Okay, so that's a fixed point. So let's see how this would work. Well, let's suppose x sub t minus 1 equals 150, and let's plug that into our model. On the left-hand side, we have x sub t. On the right-hand side, we have x sub t minus 1, which is 150, plus r times x sub t minus 1, which is 150, times 1 minus x sub t minus 1, which is 150, divided by 150. Okay, simplifying, let's see, we get 150 over 150, that just turns out to be 1, and 1 minus 1, this whole quantity turns out to be 0. In other words, r times 150 times 0, that is all 0. And working through the analysis, we simply get x sub t equals 150. In other words, when x sub t minus 1 equals 150 goes in, what comes out is also 150. The, the logistic model doesn't move our population at all once we're at 150. So 150 is an equilibrium point. Okay, so the idea is what goes in is what comes out and that's what we mean by fixed point. Now, I'd like to show you how do you find fixed points because in this last example I just gave it to you and said, hey, go and verify that it is a fixed point. But in general, we want to figure out how to find equilibrium points. And there's a couple of different cases that we'll work through. The first case I want to do, so the first case I want to do, I'll call this case one. Case one will be a 1D system, so we're only working with one variable. And we'll also look at a first order autonomous system. And to recall, we've defined these terms in previous videos, but let's just remind ourselves, first order means that our model is only depends on Okay, so first order means that our model only depends on what's happening at the previous time step, and autonomous means that uh, time is not explicitly built into the model. In other words, there's no terms with a T in it. Okay, so this is case one. 
So for these types of systems, you've got two steps. The first step is you want to replace x sub t and x sub t minus 1 with x sub eq. And that's our equilibrium point. And then you want to solve for the equilibrium points. Okay, I'd like to do two examples. So example 1, let's find the equilibrium points for x sub t equals 3 times x sub t minus 1 minus parentheses x sub t minus 1 all squared. Okay, so step 1 is to replace all these x terms with x sub eq. So I'm looking at x sub eq equals 3 times x sub eq minus x sub eq squared. Next thing I want to do is I want to solve for x sub eq. Well, let's see. Let's start to collect like terms. So I'm going to subtract x sub eq from both sides. On the left hand side I have 0 and on the right hand side I have 3 x sub eqs minus 1 of them. I'm only left with 2 x sub eqs minus x sub eq squared. Now we want to solve. So we have a common factor on the right hand side. Let's pull out the common factor x sub eq and after we do that we're left with 2 minus x sub eq. Setting each factor equal to 0 we find our equilibrium points are 0 or 2. Let's do another example. for x sub t equals x sub t minus 1 times e to the point 5 times x sub t minus 1. And again, the first step in doing these problems is to replace all of our x's with x sub eq. What goes in must come out, so everybody has to be x sub eq. Now this looks kind of complicated and how in the world would we solve for x sub eq? But let's go step by step. So let's pull everybody over to one side. So on the left hand side I'll have x sub eq minus x sub eq times e to the point 5 times x sub eq equals 0. Let's pull out a common factor pulling out x sub eq as a common factor we're left with 1 in the first term minus e to the point 5 x sub eq in the second term. Setting each factor equal to 0 we get x sub eq equals 0 or 1 minus e to the point 5 x sub eq equals 0. Well, we found one of our equilibrium points, which is 0, so that was great. We still have a little work to do over on the right-hand side. So let's add, and we get 1 equals e to the point 5 x sub eq. Taking the natural log of both sides, we have on the left hand side natural log of 1 is 0 and on the right hand side natural log of e to the point 5 x sub eq well that's just point 5 x sub eq. Continuing from here we can divide by point 5 so we're left with 0 equals x sub eq and we only had one fixed point in this problem namely 0.